one of those uh, groups in there and you think, well, what about the Bilderbergs or what about the Committee of 300 or what about the Council of Foreign Relations? There are groups that cross a number of the entities and, and associations that have already been mentioned. But, and even in those that I, I listed, the Venetians and the Khazarian parasites are mentioned more than once, and Rome and its agents, excluding the Jesuits, are mentioned more than once. So even in seven deeds, we have potentially counted people more than once. Well, there's no point counting them three or four times. Just because they come together in a cross-section group doesn't itself mean that that group has to be the one. We've tried to identify the groups based on their primary influence in evil, primary influence in corruption over the last few hundred years or that last uh, couple of millennia and hold them to account. Now, I've mentioned that the Jesuits are not listed currently in these deeds and I want to explain that and make that clear because people will say things and I please ask you to listen to what I'm about to say, have a look at what I'm about to talk about and when people raise it with you, just remind them that Franco Collins and in fact Eucadia make this very clear as to the logic. We sent out seven deeds, sorry not seven deeds, seven notices of agreement on December the 21st, 2009. And if you want to know what they are, you can go to the home page of One Heaven and see them there. And of those, one of the deeds went to the Jesuits. Now I make no bones that the Jesuits have been central in inflicting the evil on the planet since they were first formed. And the Jesuits, in fact, are central to the running of the Sestico V Trust that enslaved the planet. And they are central to the banking system. Because they are central to those things and because I have revealed so much on one hyphen evil, no one who is being rational and not suffering mental illness. No one could accuse me of hiding the evil of the Jesuits. But honour and dishonour is a separate issue at this moment of history. We sent out seven notices. Only one group replied. One group replied. And it was the Jesuits that replied. Now they did not reply with some glowing report card saying we think what you're doing is fantastic and good luck. They didn't. But if you go to uh, FAQ under the deeds of protest, which is the frequently asked questions that people ask, and one of them obviously is, why are the Jesuits excluded from the list of those in dishonour? Question number four. You will see an answer there that I have given as to why. And the simple answer is this one of the most senior Jesuits in the world, one of the most senior Jesuits in the world, met and discussed, albeit in allegory, subjects of heresy, original ideas, absence of discipline and thinking, fortitude towards completing ideas, and not once indicated a negative point towards what was happening nor did they offer a positive point except by allegory implying that what is happening must be completed properly now given the Jesuits are the controlling influence of the Bank for International Settlement the Federal Reserve the financial system United States the the crown in England the city of London that they are absolutely up to their eyeballs controlling the system that we are trying to break free of, I am under no illusion that until their position changes, they cannot in any way be considered a force for good. So what we can do and what we have done is we have issued deeds of dishonour for their agencies, the bar, the banks, the corporations, the Illuminati, all of these tentacles and place them in dishonour. And we have uh, also placed the Vatican in dishonour. 
And we also place the masters of the Jesuits, the Khazarian parasites in dishonor. So we have cut the Jesuits off. The priests remain in honor until the day of divine judgment. And if in the next 12 months the Jesuits obstruct us, imprison us, attack us, destroy us, then they, of course, will be in dishonor. But let me say one more thing on this. There has never been in the history of the world a more formidable, a more intellectually brilliant, a more uh, ego-free group than the Jesuits. And they have proven themselves to have no uh, enemy at all that can come close to their brilliance in controlling the world. I don't agree with it, but you have to see it for what it is. And when you have senior Jesuits controlling not just millions but trillions and controlling how military forces and wars are started and they still happily wear vinyl uh, nylon shirts, nylon shirts I should say, and they don't even have enough for a coffee, then that gives you an insight to the sort of self-discipline you're dealing with. So honour and dishonour to them is a major thing. Doing things properly is a major thing. I know many people will say, but if they have caused so much evil, just get on with it. Well, I said to you earlier that the, the, the prophecy of the dead shall rise. The dead will rise because on December the 21st, 2011, on the day of judgment, all the Sister KV trusts will be collapsed by deed and all, therefore, will rise. All the dead, living dead, shall rise and hell will be sealed forever. It's not happening now. It's happening in 12 months' time. So I've spoken, I think, enough then about the, the logic there, but I want to make that clear because people do say a lot of things and they say it without really thinking about the, the global importance of what's taking place and the significance of what's taking place and, and think that in their own terms that uh, let's get a posse together and round up a few people and hang them. No, it's the end of a system. It's the end of a system in history the beginning of a new period, it must be done properly. Now, as far as other messages being telegraphed, I all recommend you go and listen to the Christmas message of uh, the Pope because amidst that message, he said some extraordinary words that have never been spoken by a pontiff at least for the last 600, 700, 800 years. He said, point blank, that he prayed the Lord, and when he says Lord, he doesn't mean God. He means their Lord, Baal, Satan, Lucifer, that the Lord will fulfill his promise as soon as possible. And the Pope said also that it is the end of the garments rolled in blood. An extraordinary statement. Garments are ecclesiastical underclothes. Rolled in blood is a ritual. He didn't say clothes dipped in blood. He said, garments rolled in blood. Now those words mean a number of things. But if you want to summarize what it means, ultimately, it is, it is the end of the Khazars. It is the end of the Venetians. It is the end of the era. And the Pope himself is telegraphing to the world that it is the end. Make no mistake. They do not telegraph words in papal Christmas messages for the sake of saying, hi, how are you going? Now, again, people say, unless you give us a piece of paper saying it's the end, how can we interpret that? I mean, I can interpret tea leaves. I can interpret cloud patterns. Absolutely. But words mean something to people that have used words against us. Listen to what they're saying. See what they're doing. Make no mistake, we're not letting them off the hook. They're all in dishonour. But listen to what they're saying. Okay. Updates to the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. 
Uh, in addition to the changes that uh, putting the seven deeds on, if you go to the home page of One Heaven, uh, you'll see a section there on uh, in blue, a box in blue that says Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. So if you click on that box in blue on uh, one-heaven.org, the home page, you'll see all the material that we've been talking about over the last few weeks and months. And there's a series of links there. And it starts with the article about a world of slavery and what the SESTA KV Trust mean. Now, for those of you that have gone on and had a look, there's a couple of new sections on there because I've been receiving emails from a number of you and thank you for sending those through. Uh, people have already started to see a variety of ways that the bar is, is uh, lying, plastic lying. So there's a section there. It's called Biggest Lies. It's the seventh link from the top. If you click on it, there is uh, 10 links at the moment and I need to uh, correct the, uh, the links at the moment. They're not all matching up to the right questions, but you can see them there. Things, lies like sending a blood seal thumbprint is unlawful. Complete rubbish. And we'll explain that, you know, it's a fundamental part of uh, being able to do signature. Uh, or uh, sending ecclesiastical deed as a criminal threat or sending a deed as a terrorist act or you have no authority, or the one I love, which a number of you have been seeing, which we'll be adding probably at the top there is, I don't understand. I just don't understand. A judge actually admitting in court, I don't understand. Now, of course, that's a golden opportunity that without explaining to you what you can do can be missed. I mean, if a judge, you hand a deed poll to a judge and they say, I don't understand, I'd say, Your Honour, are you confirming that you, you are not competent with trust law and contract law? and then say nothing. The judge says, I don't understand. So I take that as a yes. Uh, well, then I request that the case be dismissed if you're not competent and see what happens. For every lie, there is a apt response. And lying is a weakness that exposes them. So I want to help all of you when you're facing these flat stick lies and intimidation, how to deal with them. And one of the lies that really, really annoys me is when they send people off for psychiatric evaluations. So there's a new link there as well called Psych Evaluations. And I look forward to you going on and having a look there on that where we give some example questions that you could ask the psychiatrist and an approach you could ask the psychiatrist that totally... Um, stabilizes well addresses if you like limits what a psychiatrist can or cannot do in trying to do their job which is to declare you mentally incompetent so the first question there is about domain competence are you an expert at trust law commercial law positive law most psychiatrists would say no well if, okay if you're not uh, an expert um, and not competent, then presume you're not going to be asking any questions about that kind of information. Well, that stuffs up a psychiatrist because most psychiatrists are there, as I said, they're there to do a job by the courts and they're there to not just declare you mentally incompetent, but to, but to pretend that the information you've exposed in court is some kind of mad conspiracy. Well, if, if a psychiatrist is not qualified to talk about trust law, commercial law, and positive law, and they're not, then how can they make an assessment on that? They can't. So I hope you all will have a chance to read that. Of course, once you've dealt with that issue, that they can't write anything in the report about any claims you've made on deep polls or trust law or commercial law, the second question is a question of mind competence. And if they're, if they're there to challenge your competence in your mental competency, then you have every right to ask, every right. The simple question, well, in your professional opinion, where is the mind? Indeed, where's my mind located? Now, of course, I know that that's going to evoke a negative response. Most psychiatrists will get visibly angry. And really, some will get enraged by that. Why? Because you've challenged the heart of the fraud. 
psychiatry is a fraudulent uh, 